Hello everyone, my name is Alessandro Beghini and I'm a structural engineer at SRAM. Today I'll talk about the application of states of self-stress to the design of grid shells. In this paper we explore two ways to design states of self-stress, either a direct linear combination of states of self-stress or designing the Aristotle's function to combine states of self-stress. We will show applications for each approach. The first approach we consider for designing grid shell is to specify the horizontal component of the axial force in the grid shell members directly in the two-dimensional projection of the grid shell. The projected horizontal forces have to be in equilibrium. The possible forces in the two-dimensional projection can be viewed as a combination of linearly independent states of self-stress. As an example, we consider the possible forms for a roof covering a train station in Chicago, USA. The desired roof structuring plan is shown here and it is intended to be a grid shell, which would resist a uniform gravity load with only axial forces in its members. The roof form is supported at the corners on columns which would not provide significant lateral stiffness, so the geometry of the roof was chosen in a way to ensure that, under gravity load, there are no horizontal support reactions. The two-dimensional grid chosen consisted of mostly quadrilateral panels, as shown here. The four corners of the grid were selected as the support locations. The outer ring of elements was fully triangulated to allow the edge of the grid to span to the four support locations. This trussing action occurs within the grid shell and is not a resisting frame. We can observe here that the maxwell caladan count gives m minus s equal to negative 17, which implies five fully symmetric states of self-stress. So what are these states of self-stress? We can see them here. Each state of self-stress is essentially a design variable and can be tuned by the designer. The forces in each state of self-stress is shown here as tij, k, where k is a state of self-stress and the coefficients alpha k act as degrees of freedom of the roof shape. We can note here that the bars define polygons which are then lifted to form a grid shell with plane faces. The three-dimensional form is derived using the force density method with force densities calculated from the forces in the members. In this study, each state of self-stress was taken as a design variable and different coefficient used to ensure that every bar was stressed. From here, the force density method can be used to find a wide range of funicular grid shells, as shown here. Note that the perimeter edge is not planar, and that many of the quads are warped, which can cause construction and cause complications. Some of these geometries are obviously not practical, but demonstrate the versatility of the approach. A more elegant approach is to design the state of self-stress through the use of an Aris stress function. The Aris stress function is one of many stress functions used in the analysis of solids. The Aris stress function, here called as phi, describes the stresses in the continuum through the second derivatives. This stress function can be extended to consider a discrete Aris stress function in which all the forces are focused along the folds of a polyhedron. A force diagram in the graphic static sense can be constructed from a discrete Aris stress function with a reciprocal relationship. The discrete Aris stress function is a lift of the form diagram. Each linearly independent lift provides an Aris stress function and an independent state of self stress. The Aris stress function approach was used in the design of a very large canopy roof covering a number of low rise podium structures for a project in China. The picture on the right shows a rendering of the project. The design intent for the canopy was to provide shelter from the elements for pedestrians. The canopy structure is modular, with each module having a rhomboidal form and being supported at the four corners on columns, as shown in the picture on the left. Each beam spans between the columns to provide vertical support for the roof, but do not provide much lateral restraint, so a self-tied geometry was preferred. The structure of each module consists of a lower grid shell structure supporting vertical struts and top roof members. The lower grid shell is the primary load resisting element and consists of a triangulated grid of aluminum members. In the design process, an Aristotle's function approach was used. We started with an initial form for the grid shell as indicated by the figure on the left. 
we are looking at the canopy grid shell upside down in this image. This initial form was derived based on a preliminary form finding and architectural constraint. We then calculated the Aristras function on the right based on the geometry on the left. Next, we assumed that the Aristras function on the right was actually a plausible geometry for the grid shell and calculated the Aristras function associated with the geometry on the right, assuming the same vertical loads. We found that the initial grid shell shape on the left was the Aristras function for the geometry on the right. This showed that the Aristras function and the corresponding grid shell are interchangeable for the same applied vertical loading. So remarkably, either geometries can be the roof and the other the Aristras function. This is analogous to the duality between the form and force diagram Either can be the structural geometry and the other the forces in the structure. Eventually, the geometry on the left was used in the project. In conclusion, this paper has investigated how states of cell stress can be used in the design of grid shell. In particular, each state of cell stress of the form diagram provides a design freedom to explore uh, grid shell forms. The linearly independent states of cell stress can either be designed directly and then combined, or an iris stress function can be designed. The force density values for each bar of a grid shell can be determined from horizontal forces and the force density method can be used to define a three-dimensional grid shell geometry. And the duality between a plane-faced funicular grid shell and this Aristras function can be leveraged in the design of triangulated grid shell. And thank you very much for your time.